Everybody, hello, welcome to the Alex Cuesta Show. Before we get into anything fun, like, share, follow, subscribe, rate five stars on Spotify and iTunes. Word of mouth, spread it. Follow us on the socials, the Alex Cuesta Show. Go search it. And today is Thursday, July 28th, not Wednesday. Little mix up on recording yesterday. We were supposed to have a guest. David, don't do this. We were supposed to have a guest. Got a little mixed up. That guest is going to come on next week. Hopefully it's going to be a great guest. I don't want to spoil it because I don't like doing spoilers and then things not happening, but it is just, I, it is just David, David. I hate you. Hello. It is a joyous, a joyous time right now because Disney star Wars is the gift that keeps on giving for me. Honestly, <laughs> uh, between Lord of the Rings, Disney star Wars. I hope they ruin David's Bioshock. I'm like, waiting. I'm excited for that too. If they're about, Disney's about to re fuck up Aragon. Like things are going really sideways right now. And Disney's a root cause of a lot of it. But, um, but yeah, hi guys. How are you? Welcome. Last week, we had a great show talking to uh, head coach Tommy Farrell and his senior wide receiver, cornerback Tyrone Benjamin. That was that was fun, Dave. Yeah, we got uh, we got a lot of good responses from that show, which was nice talking to some of our one of our homegrown guys. I appreciate everybody that decided to listen to that show because it was a really fun show. And I'm uh, looking forward to what Coach Farrell does. He just revealed if you haven't done it yet, go follow their Instagram and Twitter. They just revealed the new helmets for this year. Um, they have the block M with the white outline, the gold helmets, Dave, I think the helmets actually look really nice with the stripe and everything down the middle too. I like them. Yeah. So a new look there, hopefully it's a new squad and a new culture and a new everything there, but yeah, go listen to last week's episode. It was great. Support Manchester township, high school football, small town in New Jersey, going to do big things, but yeah, Dave, do you want to start off ruining this episode right from the get go? Go ahead, Dave. We Ruin don't it. talk about no, it. No, no, much. you we want to talk you about keep it, bringing it up. I'll just bring go it up ahead. real Ruin quick. It. There is a new young adult novel coming from Disney Star Wars called Padawan about Obi-Wan Kenobi being a Padawan. Um, and uh, apparently he's mad that Qui-Gon won't take him on a mission. So he goes on a mission on his own and he uh, learns about his sexuality while on this mission when he <laughs> encounters a group of kids. <laughs> so it is a very interesting time in Disney Star Wars. I love every moment of it because I, as much as I don't pay that much attention to Star Wars lore wise, I just know that's not a part of it. <laughs> so it's amazing to watch this happen. It really is. I'm not going to let you bait me. Just going to say no. <laughs> just going to say no. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Because I know in your mind right now, you're turning over <laughs> on everything you want to say. But we have more to get to. And I just want to say this up just to piss you off with my love of hating myself. I probably will end up reading that novel because I read most things Star Wars. So there's a good chance I will end up reading it. It's actually out if anybody's interested. It went out two days ago on the 26th. So it's actually out if you want to hate yourself, if you're a Star Wars fan, because it goes against everything that Star Wars is. Anyway, we are going to keep going. We're going to move on. We're going to go into a happier place before we go into a negative place. We're going to talk real quick uh, because the last part is probably going to be a decent, uh, decent time of talking. But we're going to talk NFL training camp is on their way. Now, I would love to tell everybody I've been paying attention to every other training camp, but I sure as hell haven't. Um, I really don't pay attention to any other team until league starts, fantasy football starts, even preseason comes around. Then I'll start kind of glancing around a little more, getting in touch with more teams because then I'll start to care a little more. But the Jets are underway. Dave, first two days of Jets training camp are in the books. I've been glued to Connor Hughes of the Athletics. I tweeted, got to turn on the notifications. Because to me, he's one of the best that actually I don't know puts a lot of the stuff out there. I believe he's not with the athletic anymore. Oh, he's not? I thought Connor. No, I believe he is not with the athletic anymore. I believe he has another job, but he's still doing jet stuff. So I gotta look that up. But yeah, he was, oh, so maybe formally the athletic, but I have I have Connor Hughes locked on with his uh whole entire his notifications because he's been 
one of the better ones with covering kind of all the preseason stuff. He gives a nice mm-hmm. little rundown. He's not crazy like some of the other guys that kind of do like every little thing. He kind of gives you highlights as it goes. So no, covering the Jets for the athletic, it still says oh, it on his bad. Twitter. Okay. So I think he's still there. I mean, I don't know. But um, but yeah, so I'm blocked in there. Dave, what are your impressions? Have you been paying attention? Have you kind of read breakdowns on Twitter and stuff? What's your impression right now? Of- I've been paying attention here and there. Mainly, I'm just happy that Makai came in at a point where the coaches are saying good things about him now <laughs> because they're at most, at best indifferent to his shape, at mo- uh, worst, kind of hating what he was doing. <laughs> but they're happy with where he's at right now. They're saying he's in very good shape. They're saying he looks good. So I'm very happy about that. I'm happy that worked itself out for the most part. I'm also happy that they made the choice to say, Makai, you're going to right tackle. Fant, you're staying at left tackle because – you can't just move a guy who had like, let's be as worst take as as like lowest you could be a top five tackle in the league because he might have actually been top three with his rating, but he was definitely top five tackle in the league last year. So you can't move him from that spot. Then I mean, there's a lot of confidence. It seems like everyone's feeling really good in training camp right now. Apparently, uh, I believe CJ Uzama said something like. About when he was asked about Zach Wilson having a Joe Burrow type leap, he said it's not if, it's when it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Like he said, he looks incredible. So I don't know. It's it's a lot of hype. So uh, we'll see how it turns out. But right now, it's pretty good. Yep. And Jets signed Quan Alexander today, which is good yes, for the linebacking just, core. Basically, just happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Basically, just happened uh, today on Thursday, as we're really, you know right before in the few hours before this episode. Um, so he's going to be a part of there with CJ Mosley, Nisra Dean, Sherwood, and Quincy Williams. So a little more depth. They still need to, I think, add a few more depth pieces there. But, you know, D Ford just got released from the Niners. I know a lot of Jets fans are clamoring for D Ford. I wouldn't mind him, but overall, I like the impressions. Um, Denzel Mims had a good first day, which makes me really happy. Caught four out of five. Zach Wilson has been pretty accurate both days. I think he was eight to ten, uh, seven to ten yesterday, eight of ten today. Uh, no pads on today was mm-hmm. apparently a good defensive day. There was a lot of people in Wilson's face, but uh, you know, like Dave said, Makai Becton going to right, coming in in shape. Um, is good. There's no competition on that line, so there's continuity now. You can start really getting that uh, going. Um, there's just been nothing really negative said. Uh, today, apparently, Sauce Gardner looked a little bit better. He looked good yesterday, but apparently looked a little more starting caliber. So, um, you know, it's just – it's going to be a fun year. I think for the Jets fans, I don't like moral victories. They don't really exist. Mm-hmm. But I feel like we're going to see a ton of them this year. Yeah, I think we if, – if we don't have – a good season. If we don't have a near playoff caliber season, I feel like we might be that team that leads the league in like one score losses. I feel like we could be that team this year and be a good team, just not quite there yet type mm-hmm. of team. Well, what did we say with the signings that's happened this off season? This team's pretty good on paper, at least. It's a lot. It's a lot better than we had recently, of course. Touchdown. But it can, yeah, exactly. But it can be pretty <laughs> damn good if Zach Wilson takes that step. Zach Wilson is the basically the, the main factor of this team this year. If he takes that step, this team can go to the playoffs. And but if he doesn't, honest. then it won't be that great of a team. And to be quite honest, training camp starts Monday. Pads go on Monday. These are all mm-hmm. on air. Um, no pads. You know, they're, they're hitting. Don't get me wrong. The, the guys in the trenches are, are smacking each other. Mm-hmm. But again, pads aren't on. Your O-linemen can't get under some shoulder pads yeah. to really control guys. So it's going to be... It'll be interesting to say the least. Um, I'm excited for it. I'm too excited. So we're going to get let down. I'm looking forward to this 0 and 17 season. So 0 <laughs> and 17. That's what I'm, that's what I'm going with. I'm coming in with an 0 and 17 mindset. So every win just makes me really, really happy. Oh, also the stealth black uniforms for the jets look fantastic. And those helmets look real nice. I, I mean, for the most it's about part, time. they do something almost, nice with them. Almost all the alt helmets that have come out and the throwback helmets I've enjoyed. I'm not, not too big of a fan of the bears. one. I'm not going to lie. No. The all orange with the orange uniform. I don't know if I like that very much. Maybe on the field it might look better. Bears, but... quick thing. Bears are also leaving Soldier Field after 50 years. They yes. are officially no, going no, no, no. to leave Soldier Field. Uh, mayor Lori Lightfoot, one of the worst mayors in the history of this country, who doesn't care about people dying in her city, is still not caring about people dying and just trying to make pitches. 
to keep the bears there. And I'll give her a little, I understand that the economic impact, probably a quarter of her city probably works <laughs> yeah, in soldier right. field <laughs> exactly. because you, you know, there's lots of positions to be had in a stadium. So I will give her a slight pass. You do want to pitch to keep that because that is a big source of income for a really raggedy town in Chicago, some parts of it, but you got bigger things to worry about, Lori Lightfoot. Who cares about the Bears? Let them go. Maybe you shouldn't have had such a shitty city to begin with and they would have stayed. Because one of the things they cited was crime. <laughs> so and they're moving like 30 miles away. It's not like they're going super yeah. far. Also, a couple quick things just to run through that it's happened so far, basically right near the beginning of training camp and after the beginning of your training camp. Because I just saw an update here. Uh, Cardinals extended Kyler Murray and they did. <laughs> have an independent study clause. We had to study for like four hours a day or something like that. And no. the memes are four yeah, hours a week. And the memes four hours have been a week. Yeah. incredible since but that's come out. they've apparently removed that just yesterday. Sure. So now, now that is removed from the contract. I don't know whether by pressure because Kyler is like, what the fuck? Because I, I mean, no one knows if he actually just doesn't study, but it was in there. So everyone's like, he doesn't study very much, but that has now been removed. But Kyler got extended, uh, pretty damn big contract, which is, I mean, he's the, the second Cardinals. highest paid quarterback in the NFL behind yeah. Aaron Rodgers per yeah. season right now. Lamar Jackson is uh, still waiting on an extension, but Lamar Jackson's uh, a running back. We'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, either way, listen, I know a lot of Ravens. I know, I know some Ravens fans might not like Lamar Jackson very much. I'm not going to lie to you guys. If I have a playmaker like that, he's done pretty well not getting hurt. I'm keeping that motherfucker. Like, he'll win you games. Lamar Jackson wins you games. No doubt. The only issue, that receiving core is terrible, and part of that has to do with, I don't think receivers believe that Lamar Jackson can get him the football. And that hurts in a passing league. I'm not not sure if that's the reasoning or if they're just not really getting receivers very Who much knows? Who knows? because I mean, that some of the things that they seem to have settled on with that receiving core, it hasn't been great, but either way, uh, those are some of the bigger things that have happened, at least contract wise. I know there are some other things I'm probably missing right now, but we could trickle those in another time. Fun, fun. All right. So that was kind of our little training camp overview. If anything happens more that we can kind of know, we might have missed some happenings. If we have missed something with your favorite team that doesn't have an impact on us, we're sorry. But we're going to jump into maybe something that could end up being a little fun, Dave. Probably going to be depressing. Maybe we could try and couch it and make it in a fun context, shall we, Dave? So, So just imagine you're sitting down on the couch. You're about to turn on a James Bond movie. What do you expect to happen? Most of these Bond movies, right? James Bond's a secret agent. He's going after someone with probably a German accent, is the main leader of this evil organization, whether it's a terrible government, whether it's a giant corporate uh, corporation, whether it's an NGO, a non-governmental organization. He has to infiltrate them. Now, usually in these Bond movies or in some of these cheesy spy movies or something like that, The villain is obvious. What they're doing to people is obvious. And everyone just kind of seems oblivious to it. (laughs) That, you know, it's obvious that these this evil group of people is doing evil things to the mass, to the population and is controlling and pulling strings. And they're not trying to hide it. But it seems like people never notice it except for the good guy who's trying to infiltrate and do these types of things. And then there's the little minions running around kind of doing their bidding. Now, go into like an E60 thing. What if I told you that's fucking going on in front of our eyes right now (laughs) as we speak that we have? I know that the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab has been described as a Bond villain by James Lindsay all the time. He quite literally says he is a Bond villain and he sounds like one. Klaus Mm -hmm. Schwab, when he speaks, sounds like a Bond villain. But man. You have to either be so indoctrinated in your own bullshit or just believe in it or just be stupid to not see what's going on. Like, Dave, if you have anything to add, just jump in, because 
when it coming from the World Economic Forum to their agenda, and I can even we can even go over a little bit of their page of what their fucking goals are, and then trickling down to what we see going on in society with the grooming going on in schools, which sorry, we're not going to be taken off of YouTube because I said grooming in schools, but the grooming going on in schools. I know I've seen people flippantly going, yeah, they're grooming. We're gonna, we're gonna do drag queen story hour and this. And it's like, yes, it's happening. But we'll, we're gonna go into more detail, but this shit's going on. Dave, do you have anything to jump in and add? Well, funny enough, I mean, Kingsman kind of makes, I guess, more of a satirical take of the Bond villain, especially in the first movie. Certainly where, does. Where, funny enough, that guy is very worried about the climate. <laughs> he decides, I can't remember exactly what his plan was, but it was something really stupid. And <laughs> apparently, Klaus Schwab and some people want to try to block the sun. <laughs> They brought it back up. <laughs> they brought that back up. So listen, Klaus Schwab is out in the open. He's one of the world's leading Marxists right now. He's wrote in five, four or five books. <laughs> I've read two of them. Block the sun. And the funny thing is he talks about this in the book and he goes, admittedly, we don't know the geopolitical implications of what would happen if we were to do something like this. And there's a whole chapter in two of his books each talking about altering the environment humans oh, altering it it's some of the funniest stuff i've ever seen because remember that one trump story about him wanting to like, send a missile into a hurricane the, the one that's <laughs> fabricated completely yeah but it was like that is stupid <laughs> it's also hilarious but yeah. also it didn't happen and he didn't have really the power to make that happen the people were not going to do that the difference here is though is that everything that Klaus Schwab has said he's wanted to do is happening. So that's the huge difference here. And especially if you go on the WEF website, you see everyone that's partnered with them. Every person that's politically partnered with them, you might have even voted for. I'm going to so, read a big partnership list of corporations. So, but, but the thing is, is that, I mean, you hear the, the term build back better from Joe Biden, maybe every other political person in that time frame when they were going for election had that same exact mantra. Very interestingly enough that everyone would have the same mantra. I don't know why they would do that. Or maybe I do if I just listen to the weird German guy that's talking <laughs> about people eating bugs and blocking out the sun because he's worried about the climate and <laughs> he wants and he wants people, he wants stakeholder capitalism so that people aren't doing things that's too harmful for themselves. So I, you you can probably go, since you probably have more pulled up than me, you can go and just read quotes. And really all you need to do is just read quotes from the guy. Everything that he said he's wanted to do, you at least heard in an article before, or maybe multiple articles at the same time. Huh, kind of weird. But they bring up the same thing at the same time on the same day. I, I don't know why exactly that would happen unless <laughs> they're doing it for some reason, whether ideologically captured or just because they like money or just because they don't want to be ruined. Either way, these things are happening and it's uh, a little obvious because, I mean, honestly, they're not liars. They're not really not most. Some of them just aren't liars at all. They're telling you what they want to do. One of his top guys basically said that humans are a plague on Earth. <laughs> like that's didn't now, basically like I, I, I'm pretty sure it's not a quote by him, but I am paraphrasing a little bit. I don't think I'm entirely incorrect in that saying, but you can go ahead. I it just you don't have to believe one that they're all just, just pulling all the strings, but. The thing is, is that there are people that obviously people and companies that are ideologically either uh, with them in tandem with them, or they just don't want to tussle with the WEF at all because they have some power here and they decide, OK, I'll just go along what they want. And what they want is what's put us in this recession starting today, this recession in America, even though it started earlier. But. And it's the same thing that we've seen happen in Sri Lanka. If you haven't paid attention, it's the same thing you're seeing happen, I believe, in Denmark with the farmers, what they're trying to pay yeah, them off. Yeah. 
And I believe America is also trying to pay off farmers. A bunch of countries are weirdly trying to pay off farmers to stop farming. I wonder why they would do that. I wonder who said they wanted that to happen. Well, Bill Gates, who is a partner of the World Economic Forum, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, buys up almost 3,000 acres of farmland. And as the People's Republic of China, who works extremely close with the World Economic Forum, bought up 5,000 acres of farmland in America. It's not a coincidence. And Dave, I'm not going to go as I'm going to go further. I I, I do want to say something real quick, though. Go ahead. Let's let's. Let's put ourselves in a vacuum. Let's say none of that, like Klaus Schwab isn't a person. None of that's happening. Why in the hell in America, in any country, would you allow a foreign country to buy up that much land? <laughs> in any time. Why would you allow that to happen? <laughs> that's just insane. An either adversary. a foreign country. Exactly. Either, but either way, either a foreign country or a company. Because BlackRock owns, owns a ton of shit. Why would you allow them to just do that? That makes no any sense. I'm sorry, but go ahead. No, no, that's fine. So I'm going to go further in you. And when you said they have some poll, no, the World Economic Forum, Forum actually controls all of the initiatives around the world, every single one that is currently going on. All the climate initiatives, all the equity initiatives, all of the woke things. Anytime that, you know, it's funny when I see people like, oh, well, this company went woke. Go check the partners list. They didn't went woke. They've been woke. Um, more than likely, they are on the World Economic Forum partners list. I'm going to read that list in a little bit. But you are part of it. Only the big names. There are hundreds of names on there. But also, you can go look up the young leaders in the World Economic Forum. They are a forum of the young leaders, and they put up people like Eric Swallow, um, like uh, Ivanka like Trump, Tr- like Justin, Justin Trudeau, Trudeau. Manuel um, Macron. Zelensky was also <laughs> a young leader as a comedian. So it's not surprising when you see some of these people joining in with a lot of the things. And like David said, the initiatives that they put out, it would be one thing. If this group of people would meet and they would say their initiative, say what they want to do, and then it would go away. Or maybe one thing would attempt to be implemented and then it would fail. What they say in Davos, and there are four yearly meetings. People don't realize that. There's the major one in Davos. Then there's an annual meeting of new champions in China. There's an annual meeting of global future uh, counselors in the UAE. And then there's the industry strategy meeting that brings together industry, industry strategy officers. They quite literally have four meetings a year to decide what goes on globally. And in the original meeting in Davos, they bring together politicians, business owners, um, Everyone, all anyone that has a leadership that has pull, billionaires, all walks of life come in here and they decide what they are going to try to do globally for the next few years or what their initiatives are, how they're going. David mentioned Build Back Better during 2020. That was an initiative launched in 2018 in Davos. It was launched. Well before COVID-19, when they started, it wasn't named Build Back Better, but the parts of it that they wanted to implement were implemented. And if you think I'm wrong, Klaus Schwab is a fucking book about it. The great narrative and the COVID-19, the the COVID-19 and the opportunities it created. He had another book earlier called The Great Reset, which I get, you know, if you're on the left, The Great Reset is a right wing conspiracy boogeyman hoax. No. Go. I saw Tiana Mack, that fucking psycho from Rhode Island, was going at one of the guys from the B because he was making fun of her. And she wrote, read a book. Go, I'm literally going to say this. Go read a book. Go read The Great Reset. I can't say, listen, I've seen a lot of excerpts. I have read two of his first books. I've read The Fourth Industrial Revolution and Strategies to Implement the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Fucking madman shit. <laughs> it is crazy person stuff in there. But also... It's what we're allowing by being so ignorant and just sitting there and just thinking everything's going to be okay. As Americans, we are, we are allowing a lot of shit to happen because we just think that everything is going to be okay. And going back to what David said, build back better was an initiative started there. World leaders trumpeted it all the, uh, uh, every Western world leader you could think of used build back better. And they're all leftists. All the leftist ones used it. Even Boris Johnson, that motherfucker is a globalist. He's not a conservative. The only thing conservative about him was Brexit in the UK. But then we have ESG, 
David and I mentioned ESG, environmental, social, and social justice. We're going to put it in its right, not societal, social justice and governance. It was couched as it's only going to be in financial sectors. They're the only ones that are going to have ESG scores, which is incredible because we're seeing it in front of our eyes. Environmental, are you in lockstep with what the left wants you to think of the environment, how they want you to work with the environmental stuff? Already crazy climate change. We you know what companies can kind of play ball with ESG, whatever. That's if that's the case. Fine. Right. Governance. We're going to go there. Are you catering more to the shareholders or are you doing their theory of stakeholder capitalism where stakeholder capitalism is you are responsible to the employees only? They get to decide. It's a democracy of the proletariat. It is a Marxist theory that stakeholder capitalism is not to the shareholders, not to the people that invested in your company that gave you money, that gave you capital in order to become the company you were that want to see investment back. No. Don't be responsible to them. Be responsible to people who have no idea how to fucking run a company that are specialists in what they do, but have no idea outside of that. That's the theory with stakeholder. So are you down with giving more of your employees power? Again, if you're a major company, you can kind of play the game with that one. Oh, yeah, sure. We're going to give them more power. Societal, the social justice one is the one that you can't fake. You could try, but they're going to come after you if you don't. And the thing is that you notice with societal and how much of a bullshit it is. Dave, did you see recently that they were talking about potentially making arms companies a big part of the S if you invest in arms companies that are oh, yeah. attempting to help Ukraine, it mm-hmm. will help your ESG score and the societal mm-hmm. factor. They make shit up. Yeah, no, the whole thing about ESG and I mean, you ran through it, but the thing is, that's only there just to put up some kind of front. It's all like ESG is literally all about control. It's all hypocritical nonsense. It, like, it, all it is is about controlling the company to do what, do what you want to do. That's all it is. It's the same thing. I mean, everyone complains every time uh, gay pride. I can't remember what, gay, what month it is. June. Every time June comes around, every company in America puts up that flag on their on their profile picture, but they'll never do it in any other in almost any other country. They won't do it there because they know it doesn't fly there. It's that simple. But it's all signaling. It's all virtue signaling to the public, but also virtue signaling to those that they don't want to ruin them. That's all it is. And then the, the ESG scores are just there to say, hey, do this. Or you're buried. That's it. it. It's a mob tactic. It's such a mob tactic. Here's the issue that it gets worse, though. <laughs> and here's where it gets worse. It started off as going to be in the financial sector. It is now moved. It was always a lie. It was always a lie. But banks are now giving individuals ESG scores. Yes. Which means that if you're a conservative, you lost. If you're on the right, anyone on the right, if you're not an extreme far leftist, you are going to have a bad ESG score. And this is modeled after the Chinese social credit score. I, if, and here's the thing. A lot of what we're saying, maybe a lot, especially if you've never heard of this before. Yes. It's all out there, though. The, these are things that are being said by the people that we're talking about. Plus, if you think, oh, banks aren't doing that to people. Please look into what is happening in Canada to some of the some of the public there where banks are just freezing their accounts and deciding they cannot work with them. And it's happened in America as well. And not also, as much as in Canada. Yet. And as in Canada, to yet. piggyback on David, look at the banks that are doing it and then go look at the World Economic Forum partners. Yeah. Every major bank in Canada is a World Economic Forum partner. It is not a surprise what's going on there. Now, it's just, I guess. It, what annoys me about this is it is out in the open. They're not, David, like I said, they're not liars. They're not lying about anything they want to do. The whole entire equity push, equity was not a big deal for the longest time. Equity became a big focus in Davos. So equity became a big focus around the world. Mm-hmm. They could give a shit less about the trans community until Davos decide to make it a big deal for gender studies and genderism to become a focus. If you hadn't noticed, no one gives a shit about women anymore. Outside of the abortion uh, thing, because abortion, they're a good tool. They're a good bunch of useful idiots. That's about it. Outside of that, nobody gives a fuck, because if you're not fully on for the trans movement as a woman, you're you're a turf. turf, And then nobody cares about (laughs) it. And then let me tell you, a trans exclusionary radical feminist is what turf means. So we're 
kicked out of a reunion for your own book that you wrote that gave every star in there the money they had. <laughs> and if you're a woman in our current age, you were kind of raised that radical feminism, new age radical feminism is the way to go. It's what you should okay. believe in as a woman to protect yourself and to get yourself equality and all that. And now you're being told, eh, trans people are more important now. If you don't think a trans woman is a woman, then you're not a real feminist. And this is all leadership coming from directives coming out of the World Economic Forum. And I shit you not, they don't hide it. They have plenty of articles out there. They have a ton of videos. They, have, they don't hide any of their speeches in the forum. You can go read them all. Now, we talked about the young leaders, Dave. I just want to bring them up real quick. Um, some of the American ones, there's four American ones. It's important because it's scary. Because some of these people, if you're listening to us and you're on the right, you're probably like, oh, they're cool. No, they're not. First and foremost, I patch McCain. Dan Crenshaw <laughs> is a 2019 <laughs> inductee of the young leaders of the World Economic Forum. Won't deny, won't denounce the World Economic Forum. He refuses to. He's been asked multiple times. Pete Buttigieg, not surprising. He's rose as quickly as he has. He was also inducted in 2019. He, they saw a star in him in his presidential campaign. They saw that he was charismatic. He's a gay man. He's a war veteran. Not a, de- not a bad looking dude in terms of looks. Put him on a, put him on a freaking soapbox. Now he's a secretary of transportation and he sucks. <laughs> Who else is on there, Dave? This is a shocking one that I don't know if you knew about. Tom Cotton, yeah. 2015. I know about that. Tom Cotton's on there. Tom Cotton really works hard to look conservative. Mm-hmm. I, anyone that's on there that doesn't fully denounce it, to me, is not. And last but not least, someone who's fooling everybody right now, Tulsi Gabbard. Stay away from Tulsi Gabbard. She is not who she claims to be at all. And we can keep going here. In Canada, Christia Freeland, she's the deputy prime minister oh, of Canada. Oh, she's the one that wanted to lock up every fucking trucker. <laughs> lock them all up. Uh, let's look at more names here of people that you might know. Emmanuel Macron, the president of yes. France, another young leader. Um, Alexander de Croo, prime minister of Belgium. Sana Marine, prime minister of Finland. These are world leaders that are under the World Economic Forum boot. Uh, it, let's, let's keep going. There's ministers of health. There's in Germany. Germany has a few of them. There is just it's an incredible number of people that everyone needs to wake up to. Now, I mentioned the grooming thing going on, Dave. They're kind of the foot soldiers. I look at them in kind of as the foot soldiers, the lions in sheep's clothing in plain sight that are just out there kind of doing the bidding because they push the DEI. They push SEL, SEL, social economic learning. Klaus Schwab just recently talked about the importance of social economic, uh, social emotional learning in schools. Just recently talked about the push. And what have we seen, Dave? A huge push for all the schools to make mm-hmm. social emotional learning a mainstay. Mm-hmm. A mainstay. And what is social emotional learning? People might be thinking, no, it's a good thing, right? It's helping kids. No. Social emotional learning is a practice that started off being used by professionals, by um, psychiatrists, psychologists, to help kids that were struggling in school with social things, emotional things, and it was affecting their learning. So trained professionals were working with these individuals, and it did show some success. Now, it went through a few phases. The most recent phase that that it's in is transformative social emotional learning. Now, buzzword, transformative, always means Marxism. I know people are going to think I'm crazy, and but just go look up whenever a Marxist speaks, they're always trying to transform. They're always trying to transformation. It's another one of those words, that, liberation, revolution, they all work hand in hand. They all work in tandem. They all mean the same exact thing. So when you talk about transformative SEL, what are you talking about? You're talking about trying to create an identity, trying to do uh, a lot of these same things as DEI. It's very similar to DEI, uh, diversity, inclusion, equity, but just 
trying to indoctrinate kids into becoming activists. Their goal is to create activists through this for what their purposes are. And Klaus Schwab is leading the charge. He wants them. He wants these kids to know climate activism. He wants them to know gender activism. He wants he wants them to know all this type of stuff. And it's coming from that group. Uh, Dave, we can go on forever talking about how terrible the World Economic Forum is. <laughs> um, what else do you want to bring here? Mainly, it's just that you really have to step back, especially when you know nothing about this and you haven't looked into it like at all. You just have to step back and think, OK, this is really big, doesn't make much sense. And maybe some of the things that we were saying are incorrect in the way that's implemented. But it is very obvious that the people that go to Davos and listen to uh, the Klaus Schwab and they talk about these things incessantly. The, the people we named, a good amount of them are implementing almost the same or very similar policies where they are and they push for them. And you wonder why that happens, whether I mean, it doesn't even have to be what orders from Klaus Schwab. No, they probably just they might just agree with what he says and they're trying to implement it in their country. But the thing is, is they're trying to implement something that they most likely weren't voted in for and is going to hurt their country for what they believe is a long term game. It, it, like there, there are many ways to look at this so you don't feel like a conspiracy nut, because I know you will <laughs> if you talk about it in some ways. But there are many ways to look at this. that are just like, OK, these people are acting this way because some incentive but it's going to hurt us. <laughs> like These things that they're trying to implement are going to hurt us. That's the main takeaway here. There, a lot of these plans are really dumb. They're really dumb on a level of actually running a country and helping people. They might be smart in some way of controlling something or maybe smart in some way of seeing this long-term thing that you might want to see come to fruition, but it's going to hurt people. <laughs> like it's very obviously going to hurt people. Some of these policies. So you have to sit back and really think about what you're digesting here and what you might be looking at. And the way I've always, and the way I've looked at this stuff, especially them all going to Davos and all just having this time, it, it, it's, it's, it's just a bunch of like rich people and powerful people who have nothing else to do. Like they have not, they have no worries. They have nothing else to do. And they just think they know better than you because they have money and because they have power. That's it. That, that, that's, that's the way I look at it. I don't know if you ever seen the, the movie society, Alex. No. So society is uh, Brian used in the film. It's, it's out there, but the thing is, it's about this alien race that took, uh, took over like a small town. They, they, I'm giving away a little bit, but it's an old movie. You should have seen it. Right? <laughs> uh, but, but and they act as like the higher bred societal people. And there's one kid that's part of a family who's still human, didn't know this. And then there's whole there's this whole event where they assimilate people into their society. And they kind of mold them into each other. And it's this disgusting thing. And it's all weird and incestuous. And, and these people are just so out there and outrageous that to a normal person, it's like, what the hell is wrong with you? But that is it's kind of similar to what it's like when you get to that point in life. So that that's I mean, if you want to look at it in the most <laughs> in the most obvious way possible, just know that these people have way too much goddamn time on their hands. And you want I mean, everyone wants to make fun of the person with essential oils who the hell do you think started this shit son like who do you think doesn't believe in medical stuff the most it's the people with the most money believe the they science. always they always look for the most holistic thing because they have no reason to believe in anything medical they just you know, go out to all outrageous lands because they can it's funny you bring up holistic because one of the things i want to read from the world economic forum website if you go on our mission there's a few things broken down what makes us unique they talk about Four things that make them unique. Let me read these to you and I'll kind of, I'm going to opine. I will tell you, I'm going to opine as I read it. Impartial. We have no ideological or commercial interests. This does not mean we are neutral. We are committed to improving the world in ways that are objective, measurable, and sustainable. So they gave you a lot of buzzwords <laughs> there and they gave away the game. They're not neutral. They are trying to push for a goal. So uh, 
They're lying when they're saying they're impartial. That is not true. You can't be impartial and kind of not be neutral. You can't be impartial and kind of not. If you're trying to push for something, then you're not impartial anymore. They don't understand the definition of words. That's the one thing you find about a lot of these globalist Marxists. They don't understand words. So they make up their own. They make up their own shit when it comes to words. So that's the first one, objective, measurable, sustainable. You'll see a lot of the things that they push are none of those because they don't believe in empirical data. Let's keep going. Global. This is when they get, listen, they're going to prove my point here. We bring attention to challenges that affect the future of global society. First of all, we are not a global society. That's the first thing. They are globalists and globalist means collectivist and collectivists all come from one of three camps. That's usually Marx, Hegel or Rousseau. And they're all basically the same exact people. Uh, Hegel gets his from Rousseau. Uh, Marx gets his stuff from Hegel. That's just how it works. So global society right there, they're trying to sit there. And if you're an American, this is scary because they're taking a shot at us. We're the big leaders. We're always the ones that have been individuals and they're trying to make us not. They hate the fact that we have private property ownership. They want nobody to own anything. They have made that clear. In the future, you will own nothing and you will like it. That is You'll be happy. Be happy and you will be happy. (laughs) People, Karl Marx raged against private property. He said the breakdown, the basic breakdown of communism is a dislike of private property. And And capitalism is his word. I'm never using it again to describe me. Not a capitalist. Capitalism was created by Karl Marx, not using it. Anyway. I'm going to continue here. Because the world is an interconnected ecosystem, we believe that no issue is isolated. There are always effects and interdependencies which we can system- systematically and rigorously take into consideration. So again, nonsense, because there is regional differences in every place. The things that affect us here in America are not going to affect people the same way in the Middle East or in Europe or in Russia or in China and even in different parts of America. It's not the same. What affects me here up in New York is going to affect people completely differently on the beaches of California. So yes, we might be connected in certain ways, but it is not the fact that every single issue is interconnected. Climates are different all around the world. So to say that one thing affects all the climates and climate change is bullshit. And that's one thing they try to get you to believe. So nonsense. David, it's funny you mentioned holistic because that's one of their things. They're holistic. Now, I need to go back again. Listen, people want to call me out for saying Marxism, Marxism, Marxism. This is a guy. I've read the Communist Manifesto. I have read Capital. I'm going to read the economic manuscripts. I know what this fucking psycho who is an actual idiot believes. And when you say holistic, David used holistic in the terms that a lot of people think, oh, it's just it's from the earth. It's an earthy thing. When holistic is used in this sense, it is meant as a global thing, as a world thing impacting the world, not from the earth impacting earth. And let's listen to the definition because they talk about it right here. We actively invite perspectives from all interested parties. We believe that the world's challenges can only be solved through engagement with all members of global society. Which if they really thought that, then Davos wouldn't be all fucking rich people. They don't think that. They don't care about your opinion if it's not in lockstep with theirs. They want your opinion if it's just parroting theirs, period. And the last thing, they're forward looking. We focus on the long term, not the emergencies of the day. (laughs) Great narrative in COVID-19. I'm sorry. Um, Success is measured not only in terms of immediate results. We understand that real progress takes time and sustained commitment. What does that mean? We don't care what we try, if it works or if it doesn't, because we were committed to the long term, not the short term. We really thought in our models this was going to work. We didn't mean to completely and totally destroy Sri Lanka that had a 98% ESG score. We did not mean to destroy them wholly and completely and make their people starve. That wasn't our goal. We had a long-term plan there. Whoops. We didn't think about the short term that people were going to fucking starve within a decade. No, we didn't think about that. We were thinking 50 years from now. These people are all snake oil salesmen, Dave. And they are power hungry and they are Marxists. And that's the only way to look at it. I know it's the boogeyman, but uh, you know, people, you can't be afraid to call out what things are. And Klaus Schwab, man, he learned from people that were from the Frankfurt School. Okay, like 
or he uh, he at least he's referenced enough of these motherfuckers in the Frankfurt School, which is a neo Marxist school in Germany. It's not it's not surprising, Dave. It really isn't. Uh, before we go, I'm definitely going to read this list of here so people can sit there and realize that everything they use every day is connected to the World Economic Forum. Dave, do you have anything before I run through this list? And this is only a few companies I wrote down. Um, just, uh, you know, you might have some extra time on your hands with uh, everything. With Cost being out of work is a recession. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it might be best to look into things a little more and maybe not be so out of the loop. If you have time on your hands, it's probably best to do that. Always be careful because there are people that will try to, to swing you in ways that maybe you don't want to go down, but it might be best to look at, look into some things it might be best to look at what you're doing, who you're giving your money to, why you're giving your money to them. I think it's always a good thing to do either way, but, Maybe right now it might be, might be a good idea. Might be a good idea. And again, I understand, listen, if it's something that you use every day, if I read a company, it's something you use every day, something you need, something you, you can't, can't do much switch, about it. Yeah. And you can't do much about it. No one is going to burn you and say, you need to switch. You need the mm-hmm. boycott. That That's not what we're here to do. We're just here to sit there and talk about the fact that we are quite literally living through an evil organization bent on taking over the world. Quite literally, their whole goal is to change the world and make us a global community, to make us a one world government. That is the true thing. One world government where the World Economic Forum has sway over everything. And we're just watching it and letting it happen. So let's go real quick. I'm going to come. Let's run down this list. It's it's decent amount of names. We're going to do it. So starting off AARP, Old People Supplemental Insurance, their partners, Abbott Labs. You kind of know that name. They were the ones that made all the fucking tests that were pushed to the forefront by the Abbott rapid test for COVID-19. Surprise. Um, Adobe. People use Adobe every day. Amazon, the most the richest freaking company on the planet. Everybody uses Amazon. I'm guilty of using it. I know what they are. Everyone uses it. Apple. Yeah. Keep on going, buying your new swanky phones when you have an option. AstraZeneca. Big Pharma. Another one. Barclays. Bank of America. You're going to hear a lot of banks on this list, people. They are, they are in with the banks. Bayer. Another um, medicine, pharma company, BlackRock. David mentioned BlackRock. BlackRock is just a company that has a bigger GDP than most countries in the world. They are, the, they are incredibly wealthy of a financial investment firm. And look into it. They are buying towns. They are actively buying towns and forcing people to rent these homes. They are not selling them. They are making it renter communities. Blackstone Group, another smaller one, doing the same thing, another investment firm. BP, Chevron, two energy companies who you would think would be against kind of the whole entire environmental movement going green. Don't be fooled. Uh, City, another bank. Coca-Cola, enjoy your drink, get woke. No wonder why they've had woke shit on there. Uh, This is a surprising one. Dairy management. I looked into them a little bit real quick. They're basically a group that kind of controls the influx and outflux of dairy around the country. Listen, these people hate farting cows. Wow. Look at this fucking here. Discovery. Discovery Channel. They just bought Turner. They just bought CNN. They're over. They're supposed to be overhauling them and make them into a real news organization again. Yeah. Believe that one. Deutsche Bank, another big bank. Dow and Dow Jones and Company, the, the, our stock ticker is a, is a partner. General Electric, obviously electric. Goldman Sachs, Google, the Google machine. Not surprised, they're wokest. H&M, go wear your fashionable shirt and be a part of the World Economic Forum. Heineken, they are a great beer company. I will not stop drinking their beer. <laughs> HP, um, Hess, another energy company, Honda car company, HSBC, another financial institution, IBM, Intel, JP Morgan Chase. So yeah, keep your Chase account. It's really safe if you don't believe in everything they believe in. Morgan Stanley, another one. Uh, Stanley Black & Decker, your tools are woke. LinkedIn, make sure you get a job if you're saying all the right things. If anyone has a LinkedIn, make sure you put your pronouns next to your profile. That's a big thing. Marriott, 
just stayed at one. Didn't know they were woke. MasterCard, you have a card. Visa's on here too, people. You want to keep paying for things? Make sure your ESG score is good. The Mayo Clinic, they are cited all the time as a respectable resource. Newsflash, they're not. They are not a good researching uh, group. Uh, Microsoft, not surprised. The Bill Moe and the Gates Foundation is also there. I didn't mention them. So it's not surprising they're there. Mozilla, your little uh, alternate uh, browser, not so alternate. NASDAQ, another big company that has a ticker. N- the Nikkei, the Chinese stock market. New York Stock Exchange, quite literally, is on here. The New York Times. Open society. Anyone that ever tells you George Soros is all for global isn't for globalism and he's just a nice guy trying to help people. Tell them the fuck off. George Soros is honestly, if you're looking at a hierarchy of like the evil people in the world, Klaus Schwab's the evil guy. George Soros is like the boss you have to be. He's Goro before you get to Shao Kahn. That's exactly how you fucking look at him or Shang Tsung. He might be Shang Tsung before you get to Shao Kahn. Where Clash Schwab is Shao Kahn, he is fucking Shang Tsung. He will take your fucking soul and your country. Pepsi's on there. PayPal's on there. PayPal just froze Eric July and their awesome friggin' Ripaverse things going on with his money. He's, he's biting into the woke pie with DC and Marvel too much. Can't have that. Pfizer, looky here. Pfizer, this one of the saviors. They're there with the World Economic Forum. Shell, another energy company. Siemens, one of the biggest companies when it comes to actually making the technology for energy that produces. Sony, keep on buying your PlayStations, kids. State Farm, your car's protected. Have ESG or get fucked. Um, TikTok, go make a cool video. And yeah, Trump barred it from being used from China. World Economic Forum is really close with China. I keep on mentioning that. TD Bank, another major bank. Lego, your fucking Lego pieces are woke. Uber, take that car. UPS, Visa, I mentioned. Walmart, for all you righties, I think Walmart's the redneck savior. It's not. Western Union, you can wire money if you have the right concepts. Yahoo, they're good for emails. And then Zoom, (laughs) what we use here. Zoom, fucking another one that's partnered. Now, again, listen, just because they're partnered doesn't mean that they're actively doing everything the World Economic Forum probably wants them to do. I get that. I'm not going to accuse them all, but it is kind of fishy. Like Dave says that when a thing comes around and it's a social justice thing, just look, do me a favor. Next time a big social justice issue occurs, um, you know, a a debatable or not debate, a a debatable uh, Supreme court thing goes down November. If the Republicans actually shellack the Democrats look and see what happens and see how these companies I mentioned go to the World Economic Forum website, look at their partners, see how those companies all respond, see what their messages are, check their tweets, check their their big things that they put out. I will bet my money that they are all very similar, that they say a lot of the similar things, if not the same. I hate being this guy, Dave. I hate it. I hate being this conspiratorial dude, but it comes to a point where it's not a conspiracy. They are well, challenging it is. people. They're well, it challenging. actually is. It's it not actually a, is kind of it's a real yeah. conspiracy. <laughs> but it's like they are challenging people to challenge them. And the ones that do are labeled quacks. But there has to be a time where enough people that see this aren't scared. Stand up and continue to say it. Because the more people say it, the more people realize it, the harder it is for them to keep the power on everybody. It's, it's quite the list. And that was only a fraction of what's on that partners. It is, it's bizarre, Dave. It's bizarre. The, what hey. we're living through right now. Hey, listen, it's okay. I mean, what was it? 50% of small, small businesses were wiped out during COVID. It's all right. Cause we had to do it. We had to make sure the bigger companies got their money while smaller businesses were wiped out. Listen, all I'm going to say is if you listen, you don't even have to care that much about the WEF and stuff like that. If you cannot recognize that things are kind of fucked right now, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, man. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure what you're what you're paying attention to, because a lot of things are either really weird or really messed up and every uh, everyone feels the same aura no matter what kind of aisle you're on everyone feels that same aura so 
I don't know, man. There's, there's lots of things that you could pay attention to. WEF seems like a prominent one. I mean, I know I don't like them, but um, either way, uh, the things <laughs> things are going to change. You know that. We'll see how they do change, though. I'm, I'm hoping for the best, but eh, hope's only so much. I'm going to try to do make sure things go okay, but we'll see. Whoever the fuck that little over 30% that approves of Biden's presidential presidency right now, what are you on? Like, you're the people that think that there's nothing wrong. They're the ones that Dave was talking to that is like head in the clouds. Like, they think Biden's doing a good job. That's the exact people that I think would fall for this nonsense that are okay with this. I think this is type of stuff is a good thing. But uh, I mean, we're two guys talking into the air. Hopefully that uh, th- this can reach more ears. And again, if you think we're quacks, that's fine. If you think we're conspiracy theorists, if we're fucking crazy, that's fine. Do a little more digging. See what these people have said out of their own mouths. See what the people that they associate with. Go search that young leaders list. A lot of people don't know that young leaders list even exists. Go search that young leaders list. See if there's any names you recognize. See what they've done. Look at the campaigns that go out. Now start to pay attention to these little social justice campaigns and see which companies are going with it. How many of them are on this list? I imagine all of them. And you know, maybe you'll start to pay attention a little more. You'll look out. When is the next, you know, I'll see if these people are fucking crazy. When's that meeting in China? When is that meeting? You know, pay attention. See what see the quotes from there. Go follow World Economic Forum on Instagram and Twitter. They, like David said, they are not shy. They put the full speeches out there. They Klaus Schwab always does a whole entire big speech every single meeting. It's they're not hiding everyone. They're not hiding. And anything you see that you think might be fucking crazy eating bugs, they pushed it. They suggested it. That's a them thing. And they're the ones that have plenty of videos hmm? of actors eating bugs out. Yeah. 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 And what was it? The well health safety seal? No, nah, it was a thing for a little bit. Yeah. That was a thing for a little <laughs> bit. But I'm, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that was an open society thing. And open society is also a part of partner, close partner, World Economic Forum. So, again, and also a fun thing if you want to do a fun exercise on there, just go search somebody's name in the search bar and you'll see if they pop up as somebody friendly with the World Economic Forum. It's great. It's great. And, you know, again, all you Trump supporters, Go search Donald Trump. You'll be surprised. It's, it's not everyone's who you think they are, everybody. That's all I got to say. That's how I will end this. Um, I know Brian Stelter hates these words, but go do your own research on this, especially because they don't want you to. Because if you look at it and you start to think, mm, it's a little fucking crazy. Maybe I'll look a little further. Maybe I'll listen to some people who are a little critical of this and maybe I'll get their perspectives and then you'll find yourself down the rabbit hole. And then all of a sudden you might've been a liberal your whole life and you are, because you think of one thing different, you're going to become an alt-rightist. Join the group. It's fun. All right, Dave, you have anything to say before we skedaddle here? Uh, No, I feel like I've said my piece. I feel like we got out enough for right now. So we did. We didn't talk about the grooming in schools. Maybe we'll talk about the grooming in schools in another episode. We kind of went more on a World Economic Forum and James Lindsay New Discourses does a great job. They, he has a whole series, four episodes, four episodes long of groomer schools where you can go into detail about the shit going on in schools. Don't let anyone ever tell you they're not fucking with our kids in schools. They are. They suck. But anyway, we're going to go. We're going to run out of this one. NFL is back. Baby, training camp's here. We can go on a positive. Let's go on a positive. Go Jets. 0-17. Let's do this. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. I hope we didn't ruin your day or night too much. So long, everybody. Till next time.